we're going to take you on a little, um, yeah, little thought experiment and then a personal story on globally connected and rooted locally. Um, Xavier and I are both working in All for Climate DAO. We founded that a couple of months ago and we are a network of grassroots activists and citizens working on solutions for our planet and the community. Um, yeah, and we like to uh, start with a friendly reminder that as of today, we are still going straight to extinction. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was last month. We broke the record of CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. So we have to do something about it. The good news is that this is the shedding point of the hope for of the people actually building stuff for the future to actually solve that problem. So thank you for your work. And since we heard it was actually the workshop room, uh, we would like to work a tiny bit, a tiny bit of this presentation. Um, so we would like to invite you to, uh, to get up, if that's possible. And we're going to build what they call in activist circles. It's a very typical thing in, in activist grassroots movements to do a spectrum line. So we would like to ask you, um, are you more, you as a person, the work that you do, maybe also your personal and your private situation, would you rather associate yourself with I'm globally connected or I am rooted locally, right? This is the spectrum. If you feel more like I'm rooted locally, then you go towards the screen. If you say like, no, I'm more all the way on globally connected, you go there. But you have the whole spectrum here, so you can position yourself between local and so basically, if you don't have an internet connection, you stick to the wall over there. And if you spend all day on the internet, you stick to the screen here. Yeah. And then there is all the spectrum. Ah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. All right, all right. Global to the end. So if you are all the time on Discord, you go there. And if you are never connected, you go here on the stage. And then there is a spectrum line. There is all the way. So if you have 50 50, you go in the middle. Maybe we can go with the mic. We can go and yeah. inter interview people in the, with the mic. The mic is over there. Right, can somebody maybe just do a, a vision of the room? Just something that's just like, oh, wow, I, I right. observe this. One person. I observe this. Right. They're all Where should Web3 focus attention? Okay. Somebody who wants to make an observation? What, what just happened? We moved a tiny bit more, and I see the hesitation also. It's like, uh, uh, do I actually want to move forward? I'm a bit uncomfortable here. Oh, it's so comfortable in my, in my connected lo uh, globally. Um, OK, find somebody around you and ask the question, why should we be more local, and how do we do that? So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. First thing for yourself a tiny bit, why? Why? What happened here inside of me? Why should we be more local? Then turn around to a neighbor and have a mini chat for about 30 seconds and then find another duo. Okay? So we're going to have you engage for a couple of minutes. Why should we be more local? And how? And how? Why and how? That works, no?
Look at it. We only have five minutes left. Oh, wow, but it's so short. Okay, all right, okay. All right. Okay, maybe turn around to another duo and, and have a tiny bit of a, of a lap, but it's just like for 10 seconds. Like, what did you talk about? 10 seconds. In a group of four. In a group of four, or, yeah. For people coming in, please come closer. Yeah, yeah, sure. OK, we're going to have to stop you here. Sorry for interrupting. Is there anybody in the group, and I'm sorry for not having more time for this, but is there anybody in the group that heard like a brilliant idea, a mind-blowing, like, oh my god, yes, actually, that, that, that is crazy. That's a good idea. Yes. <laughs> So first, global a connection so that it can empower locals um, to adapt. Yeah, thank you. Somebody else? Maybe real quick? Don't worry, we have the time for no? somebody else. No. Yes. All right. Yep. Okay, so the question that we would like to bring to the table today, if we are very short in time, sorry, this, this could be a, a full hour, but we want to bring forward why we think it's important that we keep, that we stay locally rooted, that we stay with our two feet on the ground, that we get to know our neighbors and that we actually talk about crypto. What we sense very much in the space now is that Web3 is a bit like this subculture it starts in the margins of society, a group, pioneers if you want, that want to change the world and have a vision on that. Um, you can compare that to maybe activist groups like Extinction Rebellion. You create a set of values, you talk a lot. You also create this culture in conferences, you come together, you talk together, right? But it starts at the margins. Now we believe that if we really, really want to make that change happen, then we have to start talking ASAP to our neighbors and to, the fr and to our friends. Not in a convincing mode, but showing them what it actually can do to you. For two reasons. One, we need as many people on board as we can. And the second reason is that if we don't talk to our neighbors, we in no time build infrastructure that they do not need. And it will be a top-down feeling. So we need to talk to them and ask, what do we need? What do we need to build? What is it actually that you want? Otherwise, we end up in a capitalist system again with fake needs and creating fake wishes that nobody actually needs, right? So that's um, how did we do that? A little bit our story. Um, we moved to Brussels uh, three years ago. We knew nobody. 
Um, we have a bit of an activist mindset. We are a bit rebels always where we go. Um, so we started with a, a tiny garden in front of our door. Um, we have a, a house and a garage, but we don't have a car. So we thought, like, there is a 12 square meter that, ha that cannot be used by anyone because nobody can park their car there, so let's put a garden there. And then in no time, we were actually able to um, recreate a mini community in our street. We would have our coffee during the lockdown, uh, and we would meet the people, right? So we would take and, and have this whole, the public space as we use it right now, taken over by cars, we questioned that whole thing. Um, and from there it grew. Um, we then took not only that 12 square meters in front of our house, but we now occupy also a building at the end of our street. It's called the Citizen Corner. Um, well, funny enough, it started also with a garden that was just in front and that was just like collecting trash. And so we turned that into another garden. And the interesting thing is that in the process, all of that actually is an excuse to start a conversation with your neighbors. And the thing is that unlike in Web3, where there is actually you don't need to trust because the blockchain is creating this environment where you don't need to know who is on the other side, actually in real life, actually it starts with trust. Right? There is no way you're going to convince people that Web3 is good for the environment before you have started building a trust relationship with them. And that only starts after the third time you bump into each other and you start a conversation. And so by and creating a project. and a project together, project is what brings people together. Right? And so here is a good project. A lot of people can agree this is a good idea. We do it. We turn this space into that space. That's amazing. And then we realize that actually there is a building. It's empty. So hey, what about we take it? Um, and so we, long, we don't have the time to go through all of that, but we can talk about that later. So now we have a thousand square meters, and we turn that into a citizen corner, right? That we try to operate as a DAO. So we took the opportunity of starting DAO Brussels <coughs> there, because every city is actually a decentralized autonomous organization. They just don't know it yet, right? But we are here to change that. Um, and so, yeah, we organize every first Wednesday of the month a Crypto Wednesday, uh, where we invite different people, we do uh, conversation tables, and so on. And that makes it very real. We already onboarded a ton of citizens to Web3, thanks to that. Um, and then, yeah, and then we also decided to, to do like a, NF a solar punk NFT contest. We want to bring local artists to discover the world of NFTs, to discover a new way to fund their art, uh, and so we organized this contest. We had a lot of submissions. Uh, and that, especially there, we invited uh, normal citizens, just citizens, creative citizens in Brussels, to reimagine what their city would look like, in, in completely inspired by the solar punk movement. So we had just uh, creative people in Brussels rethink their city, and then we organized um, a com uh, uh, exhibition on that, and we gave them the opportunity to mint it as an NFT. So you onboard people in a very soft uh, and friendly, very accessible way. And so all of a sudden, all of this obscure world of Web3 that most people only hear about through mainstream media, they only talk about energy consumption and so on, now all of a sudden, people can put a face behind, mm -hmm. right? And then meet other citizens from all walks of life, and they see how it can actually make a difference for them, how it can fund art that has been lacking funding for years, especially after mm -hmm. COVID, mm -hmm. right? So make it real for people. Yeah. Um, and let Web3 be about human conversations and connecting humans instead of only about technology. Um, exactly. So um, I don't know why the slides are going backwards for all of a sudden. Um, but basically, the next thing that we, that we are organizing um, with, with many people actually in the room, uh, so Anna-Marie is there, Jeremy, Jeremy. Jeremy. Hola, all of those great regions. <laughs> it's about uniting regions, right? Regions from all walks of life, all different backgrounds. Whether you're in Web3 at the shelling point, public goods is good. Whether you are a climate activist, a citizen, an NGO, we actually all share the same goals. We all want a regenerative planet, a regenerative future, mm -hmm. right? But we are all each in our own silos. We don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So it's time to put everyone in a room and start talking to each other, unite. So if you're in Brussels next month, uh, it's just two hour trains from here, come uh, apply on regionsunite.earth and we're gonna have a great time together.
Yeah, and it's all going to be about conversation. So we're going to do a screen-free. You can take your phone, though. But for the rest, <laughs> it's going to be a screen-free uh, event where we talk and we learn how to connect uh, with conversation. Uh, Regionsunite.earth. Voilà. Any questions? With What's the website again? <laughs> Regionsunite.earth. <laughs> Uh, Regents you. Unite on Twitter. Yeah, over there. So, I don't live in Brussels, and I'd love to start something like this in my city. How, do you have a template version of this? How do you start something like this in Russia? Please do. We need yeah. Regents Unite everywhere, because it has to be decentralized. Yes. So I don't know where your city is. Uh, sorry? In the US. Oh, yeah, Denver. Denver. Yes. Yeah. What we try to do now with the team is, uh, is preparing uh, the conference as transparent as possible. So we're ac actually trying to document the process that we're going through in a public drive.regionsunite.earth. Um, so yeah, please reach out and then afterwards you c we give you everything. So you can copy paste and adapt to your, or adjust to your local context. Yes. Yeah, we're inviting actually all DAOs to join, right? DAOs are decentralized, so there must be someone in that Discord server who is within, you know, reasonable distance from Brussels. Um, and then, yeah, and then spread. And then we're also organizing that as a DAO itself. So we just created a mini DAO for organizing this event mm -hmm. so that we can actually create a template that can be hopefully copy-pasted. Yeah, there is a DAO um, and, a, and a Discord server as well. We're not opening it completely yet because we need to slowly grow into it. But the idea is really to organize as a commons and as a yeah as a as a DAO and an organization, an organism that then can be copy pasted uh, in other cities. All right. Thank you so much.